The politics have always been deeply personal for Representative Mondaire Jones. As a gay black man in America, he knows firsthand the pains of poverty, bigotry, and police violence. The former litigator turned legislator doesn't mince words. He unapologetically calls out his colleagues and then he calls on us to be the change we need. Um, you've said over and over that the politics are personal for you. Sometimes, you know, issues of life and death for people. So I, I would love it if you could just start there and speak to us about how personal the politics are and why it matters uh, that you lead thinking through that intersectional lens. I, I so appreciate that observation uh, because, it, you know, on, on, the, on the far right, uh, people like us, I think people who are of color and, and who are members of the LGBTQ plus and other communities and get vilified for, you know, it, uh, allegedly playing identity politics. But the fact is that we are all the products of our lived experiences, mm. including our upbringing. Uh, in my case, I am, you know, privileged to, to, to know that even before the election of Donald J. Trump as president of the United States, uh, this country had a lot of problems. Uh, I knew that because I watched as my mom worked multiple jobs to provide for our family, which no one should technically have to do in this economy. I knew that our social safety net was inadequate because she had to work those multiple jobs, even as she also received Section 8 housing and food stamps and help from my grandparents in raising me because childcare was so expensive. Uh, I knew that our healthcare system was broken because I watched as my grandmother worked well past the age of retirement just to pay for the high cost of prescription drugs and medical procedures that are not fully covered by Medicare. Uh, as an openly gay person, it is still the case that certain fundamental human rights are not secured for me under federal law. And as a black man in America, I know the urgency of the need to end police violence against black and brown people in this country. Uh, and so for me, it's no question uh, that the filibuster has to go. Uh, whereas I think for, for other people who uh, who, who don't ha bring those experience with them, you know, who, who don't have that same sense of urgency because they're going to be all right regardless, uh, the politics are different. I want to, you know, get to that uh, sense of the intersectionality of the policy issues that you care about um, and are championing in, in Congress. You are also a member of the progressive wing. So you are the first uh, one of the first out black uh, gay elected officials, and you are a staunch progressive. And if you could just share with us a little bit about, you know, the difference in the ideologies. You know, you mentioned conservatives and tell us about, you know, why you're a progressive and what does that even mean? I'm, I'm a progressive because I think that we need big, bold, structural solutions for our greatest challenges. Uh, we cannot afford any longer to sort of uh, work on the margins, uh, so to speak, right? I mean, we, we, if we are to ensure that everyone in the richest nation in the world has health care, then we need a single-payer Medicare for all system, uh, unlike anything less than that, uh, which would leave many millions of people uninsured in this country. Uh, I know that, you know, as a millennial, which is something I have not yet mentioned, a 34-year-old, that the climate crisis is existential. And... I'm going to inherit this planet along with people my age and younger, and it's going to be devastated by climate catastrophe because people who have been in office for a very long time have failed to act with the kind of urgency that this issue requires. And so it's why I champion a Green New Deal. So, you know, kind of as a, as a last word, there are so many people looking to you, inspired by you, whether they're black or queer or millennial or otherwise, that are watching Washington and how, to the point you just made, absolutely nothing gets done. So tell us, now that we have you, Representation Matters, and others um, who are fighting with the, in the squad with you, what can we be doing on the outside to continue to drive progress and equality and justice, uh, especially in the wake of a, a legislative body that doesn't do much? It, the, the biggest and most important thing that people can do right now is focus on the issues of democracy and voting rights. Uh, the fact is our democracy is in crisis, uh, we have a major political party called the Republican Party that knows that its policies are deeply unpopular. And so in order to win national elections, has pivoted to disenfranchising large numbers of the American people, including black and brown people, 
uh, and working people and young people, the same coalition that got Joe Biden elected and delivered the state of Georgia uh, to our two incredible new Democratic senators, Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff. Uh, and so we have to continue to elevate this issue. We've only got a few months left to pass a, a bill called the For the People Act, which would undo the voter suppression that has been enacted in places like Georgia and Florida recently. Uh, and, and, you know, unfortunately, probably in Texas soon, too, uh, and in Arizona and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, because what is at stake is the 2022 midterms and then also whether we will have a Congress that will certify the presidential election or what I hope will be a Democrat president uh, reelected in 2024.